It's upside down. Cool. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ben, uh, and I work as a software engineer at Twig. Um, and today I want to tell you about uh, Skyscope, which is a new tool that I've been working on. Um, so, uh, and, and Skyscope lets you uh, visualize and explore basal um, sky frame graphs in your web browser. Um, as to why you'd want to do this, um, maybe if you're debugging a, a, a tricky dependency issue, um, or you find yourself working in a new repository and you uh, want to quickly gain an understanding of how it's structured um, and uh, which targets depend on each other, um, then it's quite useful to be able to see a, a visual representation of the build graph. Um, so this is what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to show a, a, a video demo in a, a few minutes, um, but here's a preview first. Um, so one way to, to characterize uh, Skyscope is to say that it's an interactive front-end to graph viz. Um, so I'm sure many of you are familiar with graph viz, um, but if you're not, the, uh, the basic idea is pretty simple. Instead of manually drawing out your graph in some diagram software, you describe its structure in a domain-specific language like this. Uh, so this example um, describes a graph with five nodes, A to E, and uh, various edges. Um, and then you run this through Graphviz, and it produces an image like the one on the right. Uh, so Graphviz has been, around, has been around for a long time now, uh, 20 years at least, um, and many different tools and libraries support it, uh, including Bazel. Uh, so this, this post uh, tells you how you can visualize to build graphs with Bazel. Um, but the basic idea is that when you do a, a Bazel query, you can get to output in Graphviz format. Um, and then when you run that through Graphviz, you'll get a, a, an image like this. Um, so this one's taken from the Envoy repository. Um, and that, that's pretty useful. Uh, here's a, an example of a larger graph. Um, you can't really read it at this scale, but if you zoomed in, it, it is legible. Um, there's some crossover with the edges, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, the, tr the trouble is, as your graphs start getting larger and larger and more complex, the edges quickly become a tangled mess um, until it's basically impossible to uh, make any sense of it at all. Um, so that's Graphviz. Um, it's, it's a great tool, but it does struggle with large graphs. Um, and that's not really the fault of Graphviz. It's just that laying out graphs in 2D is, is inherently difficult. Um, so pivoting now to Skyframe. Um, I don't think I have to say much about this. We had a great talk this morning on, on Skyframe. Um, so I guess I'll just say that um, Bazel lets you get access to the current state of the Skyframe graph with a Bazel dump command like this. Um, and just to show you what that looks like, um, this is a very small snippet of what could potentially be hundreds of megabytes or even gigabytes of data uh, of text. Um, this isn't meant to make any sense to you really, but it, um, I'll just say it, it represents um, five nodes, uh, sorry, yeah, five nodes with four edges in the graph. Um, there's about 40 different types of nodes in a Skyframe graph, and they all correspond to the kind of things you need, the Bazel needs to know about to do incremental builds. Uh, so yeah, it's great that we get access to this. Um, but it's, it's pretty hard to make any sense of. Um, it'd be great if we could parse it and feed it through Graphviz and get a visual representation. Um, but as I said, it's, Skyframe graphs are huge, and there's no way that Graphviz is going to handle that much data. Uh, so the solution I came up with for Skyscope, um, it's fairly obvious, I guess. Instead of trying to render the entire thing, just render a, a tiny subset, say maybe 10 to 20 nodes at a time. And at that scale, Graphviz will, will work much better. It'll be fast, and the graphs it produces will be understandable. Uh, the key thing is, though, that the, uh, the, the rendered graph um, is interactive, so you can um, click on various parts of it to, to show and hide nodes. Um, and yeah, that's, that's basically the idea behind it. Um, just before we come on to the video, a uh, uh, note about terminology. Um, so uh, Skyscope has this concept of expanded and collapsed nodes. Um, when a node is expanded, you get to see all of its edges. Um, the trouble is, uh, some nodes might have hundreds or thousands of edges. Um, and so that's going to, even if you just have that one node visible, it's going to make a mess of the graph. So you can collapse nodes, um, and then only edges to other visible nodes are actually shown. Uh, so yeah, here's the video demo. Uh, the first thing you need to do is import the current state of the Skyframe graph into Skyscope. Um, it's, the, the Skyframe graph can get pretty huge, so it's usually a good idea to start with a basal shutdown. Um, that clears the, the graph, and then you run um, the build command to populate the, the graph again with just the nodes that you're interested in. Uh, so here I'm building the Bazel binary itself. Um, it was built before, so this is just going to, once it finishes loading and analyzing um, and checking the cached actions, it, it'll be done in another few seconds. Um, and then when that finishes, you run a Skyscope import command, um, and that will, will uh, dump the Skyframe data, parse it, and, and bring it into Skyscope. Um, so just another few seconds, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can... 
so skyscope import on its own is enough, but you can optionally pass um, query and a query parameters to it. Uh, and if you do this, th then skyscope is able to import extra context for um, for targets and actions, uh, and that gives you a richer experience uh, in in skyscope. Um, so the extra context is stuff like um, which build file the target was defined in, uh, or for um, action execution nodes, you get to see a nice, pretty uh, mnemonic label instead of just action execution. Um, it takes about a minute to import this on, on my laptop, but I've, I've actually cut the video um, here. So there's 400,000 edges. You'll see it jump up. Uh, there we go. Uh, so this, this is finished now, um, and you, you get a, a link to open in, in, in your browser. Um, when you first open it, no nodes are visible, so it's empty. But you can search for, for nodes to display in the top here. Um, you can search by file name or label. Um, uh, basically, anything that forms part of the um, uh, of the sky key, the 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 key for the node. So here, I, I've searched for the um, the Basel server Java binary target and made it visible. Uh, when when it's initially visible, uh, so if you hover over it, you can see what the build file it's defined in. Um, it's initially collapsed, so you don't see any edges. But by clicking on it, you can toggle it to be expanded. So now you see all the things that depend on it and that it depends on. Uh, if you hover over these, you can see their action executions. By clicking on one of these hidden nodes, uh, it makes that, that node visible in the collapsed state. Um, and so I'm going to click on this. Uh, yeah, you can hover over it, you'll see the, um, the A query output. Uh, by clicking on that, it becomes expanded. And then if you click on an expanded node, that collapses it again. Um, so uh, another feature to show you, um, I'm searching for a, a source file that I know the Basel server uh, uh, target depends upon, cppcompileaction.java. Uh, if I make the configure target for that visible, um, Skyscope knows there's a dependency there, so it will show you a dotted path between. Um, and if you click on, on, on open, um, so yeah, that says there's two. If you click, click on open now, it'll make all the nodes on the dependency path visible. Um, so this is kind of like a, a, a some, some path query, I think is, is, uh, is what it's called. Uh, so yeah, if you hover over this, you can now see how the dependency works. We've got the Basel server binary depends on the main library, which depends on the rules library, which depends on the CPP library, which depends on, on the file. Um, you can hold shift and sort of make a selection of nodes to crop the selection to that. So um, you, you can sort of zoom in on, on an area again. Um, double clicking on a node makes all of its uh, neighbors visible. So we now see that um, four other targets depend on, on this source file, uh, two file groups and two Java libraries. I think they're actually the same label, but different configurations or something. Um, just to demonstrate the uh, crop to selection feature again, uh, holding shift and clicking these three nodes that will focus in on those. Uh, some, some nodes have hundreds of edges uh, like this one. Um, so you might click that and even though there's not many nodes visible, it still kind of blows the graph up a bit. Uh, but Skyscope is, is fully in, has a fully integrated browser history. So you should feel free to explore um, because if you get lost or make a mess, you can always go back and, and, uh, and do stuff. Uh, forwards works as well, so I think in a minute I stop going backwards and start going forwards. Um, nearly at time now, but I think there's one more feature to show. Uh, yeah, so we're we're back to back to here. So uh, making this hit node visible, th this is Starlight built-ins. Um, every target in the graph depends on on this particular node. So um, yeah, I click it to try and expand it, um, and we're going to be here a while if we actually wait for this because. I've never waited to see how long it takes to render. But if you get in this stage, you can click the spinning hourglass in the lower right-hand corner, and that interrupts rendering and, and takes you back to the, um, the state you were in before. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I had to show you. Um, yeah, so thanks for listening, and uh, please give us a